Hello, ghouls and gals. Welcome back to The Crash Hub. I am Kayla with Cafe Crashdown, and today we're talking about a little bit of sci-fi and a heck of a lot of horror in this latest episode of Doctor Who, which is episode 5, 73 Yards. Let's roll the intro. Hey there, my dudes. Welcome back to The Crash Hub. I am so excited to talk about today's episode because like I said in the very beginning, it had a lot of horror elements, which we all know that I absolutely love, especially in regards to the filmmaking of this episode. I thought the shots were just, oh, they were so good. But before we get into this episode, would you please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you don't miss our next recap of the latest season of Doctor Who, which season 14 has definitely been a very interesting season. And I really can't wait to get through all of these episodes with you guys. And then at the end, just kind of give like that whole, whole overall feel and vibe of the season. Cause I still feel like we're just getting in the nitty gritty of it, even though we're in episode five. So definitely make sure that you ring that bell so you can be part of the Doctor Who cosmic journey with me. Now let's get into the episode. This episode to me was just absolute horror vibes. There was very little sci-fi. We had a lot of supernatural elements talking about the fae and fairy circles. We had a whole lot of this It Follows vibe with like the woman in the distance. Yes, 73 yards uh, going off of the title of the episode name. And a lot of the filming too of this episode, there were so many shots that were very iconic shots that a lot of horror filmmaking uses. Like for example, the, the canted angled shots, um, we get a lot of that in a lot of the Evil Dead films, especially the second one. The second Evil Dead film was basically made that kind of canted shot notorious, right? And so we get a lot of really cool up close shots uh, when she's visiting the pub in Wales, uh, which brought a lot of, uh, it warms my heart seeing those shots. <laughs> but yeah, again, it had very much the It Follows vibes with this woman just trailing Ruby. So in the beginning, we find ourselves in Wales. The TARDIS has landed with the Doctor and Ruby and they're on this beautiful cliff right away as soon as the TARDIS landed on this cliff. I knew that they were in Wales. Doctor Who loves filming in Wales and especially it seems this area as well. I'm not really sure on the exact location of where this episode was shot uh, with the TARDIS, but we've seen it before. So I, I knew right away we were in Wales and I mean, it was just breathtaking shots. And it was so beautiful seeing the TARDIS up there on the cliff. You had the ocean right behind it. It was so beautiful. So the doctor's in the cute little raincoat and they're running out and then they step into what we find out is a fairy circle. Uh, which I thought was really interesting that, and they actually mentioned this in the show when they later on talked to Kate, how the supernatural has becoming more and more involved in the show, which I'm sure some Whovians aren't exactly thrilled about that. Um, but it is, it does seem to show that they're adding more of this into it. So we have, of course, you know, the science vibes, and now we're adding in a little bit more supernatural elements. So now we're, we're talking about Fae and we're talking about pantheons with gods and goddesses and things like that. So it's definitely interesting to see where this road is leading us, right? So the doctor ends up stepping into this fairy circle and, you know, Ruby being curious, she's pulling these little scrolls and she's reading them out loud. And as she's reading them, then the doctor disappears. So we already have this like, horror element that's already starting, right? Oh, suddenly you're reading this little creepy scroll that's like hanging in this little, or laying in this little circle thing, uh, which right away I was totally getting witchy vibes. So I was like, don't touch anything. But of course, Ruby touches it, she reads it, and the doctor disappears. And then she notices the creepy woman in the distance, 73 yards away, and she's doing these like weird hand things, like interpretive dancing. The cats are back, dreams. And so Ruby is freaking out. She can't get into the TARDIS. She can't find the doctor. She's alone. She has this creepy woman that seems to be following her. Every time she walks a few feet, the woman is 
in the same distance away from her. And so she's going, she's hiking through this cliff because she has nowhere else to go. Her ride is completely gone. And who does she run into? She runs into Susan Twist. Um, I'm saying her actual name because this actress is becoming a reoccurring character. And so we have the same actress in every single episode. So who is she? Who is Susan Twist in this show? Uh, it's quite a conundrum. So she is a hiker in this episode. And, uh, you know, Ruby's talking to her. She's like, hey, could you talk to that creepy woman? Let her know, like, sorry, I stepped in your little weird circle. Didn't mean any harm. And then when the, the hiker ends up going up there or Susan Twist goes up there, uh, we see that she's interacting with a woman and then she just runs. She just runs away and freaks out. So whatever she encountered there, a little bit terrifying. So Ruby finds herself in this town and she ends up going into this pub because she's looking for a place to stay. She needs, she needs some food, needs something to drink, needs to assess what the heck is going on. And people in this pub are absolutely rude for one. They're angry people. So it's like, is this town just like possessed or something? And they're just like, it's like almost reminded me of Derry um, and Derry, Maine with like, the whole It franchise when they were talking about how like that town, everybody's just completely miserable and uh, terrible. And it's just really because of this possession that the It creature has on this town. And so it just reminded me of that. So I'm like, oh, maybe this like woman is basically It in this town and is just completely controlling these people and ruining their lives. I don't know. But they were all terrible, playing pranks on her and just, you know, charging her like five quint, which I don't even know. I don't even know how much that is, but it sounds like a lot for a Coke, just stupid things like that. So poor Ruby is on her own and she's trying to deal with this. She's trying to figure out this mystery. She's being stalked by this woman. Every time she sends someone to go talk to this woman, they just completely disappear. So Ruby decides to leave and she heads back home. She sees her mom, which I absolutely love Ruby and her family. Her adoptive mother and grandmother just crack me up every time. And it always warms my heart when I see them. So she gives them the lowdown. She tells them, hey, I don't know what happened. A lot of weird things have been happening. The doctor left. He's missing and I have this creepy woman stalking me. And of course, being a mom, she's like, well, I'm going to talk to her, right? Like, I'm going to handle this for you, Ruby. We got this. We're going to be on phones together. We're going to, you know, I'll be on the phone with her and I'm going to talk to her so you can hear everything going down. And then what happens? Her mom goes up to the creepy woman and her mom disengages, right? She totally vanishes and she like abandons Ruby. And it's to the extreme. Like I thought it was more like these people were just being terrified by this woman, but it has a lot more to do with it. And it's more like they're just trying to get the F away from Ruby and don't want to have anything to do with Ruby anymore, which that never really got answered in my opinion, or maybe it did and I just didn't notice it on this first watch. I'll have to do a second watch to see, but I, I, I didn't get that answer as to why it was the whole abandonment thing, which is just a reoccurring thing for Ruby in general, right? Oh, and one thing I do want to mention is when Ruby was on the street with her mom, we had the Snoopy neighbor who was making her reappearance again, which very suspicious. I I don't know who she is, but she keeps popping up also. So who is this sus? And then who is Susan Twist? I think they're in cahoots. We'll figure it out. Not sure who. So since her mom abandoned her, she literally locked Ruby out of the apartment and like told Ruby to get out. She doesn't want to see her. Poor Ruby is sitting outside the door and there's like a little bit of snow, which again is another theme with Ruby. So then we find out that it's been a year and Ruby's hanging out at this cafe and Kate Stewart shows up. We love seeing Kate, although I felt that Kate was a little weird in this episode. I don't know if anyone else got that vibe, but I at first was like, is she under a spell? Like is something up here? She's acting very strange, but it could just been me reading. I was trying to read into everybody at this point, trying to figure out what's happening, but you know, we get a little bit of dialogue of just her communicating to Ruby here, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to 
support you through this. We help former companions of the doctor, kind of given the lowdown. So for those of you who don't know who Kate is, because some of you are new to Doctor Who, which again, hello, welcome. Welcome to this new reboot and season of Doctor Who. Kate Stewart is someone who is I would say she's a reoccurring character throughout the season. She is basically a person who works for the government, for uh, the British government, and it's like a special forces, she mentioned it. I can't remember the title. It was super long and ridiculous, but they know basically everything there is to know to their ability about the doctor and about um, extraterrestrial activities going on. Um, so you can kind of view it as almost like a shield and Marvel where they're uh, trying to make sure to, you know, monitor things, what's going on when aliens do drop in, just kind of monitoring that situation. And with Kate, she mentions this in the episode that her doctor Doctor, I would say it's not that it's love-hate, but they definitely have a very trying relationship at times. They don't always see eye to eye, but where it all comes at the end of the day, they both really love each other and admire each other, and they know that they are working for the greater good and how they see the greater good. So there's definitely mass respect there. So she tells Ruby, hey, we're we're here to help you, to take care of you, and we are gonna take this woman in. We're gonna bring her in, we're gonna interrogate her, figure out what her whole deal is, where she comes from, what she wants. We're gonna send a team in. Ruby's like, I don't know, man, like you've already, I have sent people to talk to this woman. I mean, look at my mother. She completely abandoned me after um, going up to this woman and even talking to her. I. I don't know, in case I don't know, we've got psychic training, you know, my men are trained for this stuff. We've got like weird like witches, talismans, you name it. They have like the whole shebang. They're ready for what they say is whatever's gonna happen. And so they go in and then what happens? They disengage, they all abandon Ruby. Ruby is back to being by herself again. <laughs> so man, poor Ruby, she can't get a break. So we have time that has passed. And so we're getting year by year and, you know, we're just trying to date and she's dating and she's just seeing at the corner of her eye, the woman again doing her hand things, whatever this is. Again, do we ever figure out what this is? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so, but it's fine. It adds to the visuals, right? We get to where it's eventually 40 years and Ruby is on a date with a guy and she overhears the TV in the bar that they are in and she finds out that this guy is running to be prime minister. And she remembers the name because it was a name when they got her and the doctor had gotten out of the TARDIS. He had mentioned, oh, this guy is the prime minister. He is terrible. He um, was, you know, he started nuclear war for Wales and it was really bad. And he was like, oh crap, what year were you where are you from? And she's like, oh, you know, like 2024. And he's like, oh, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> and so then she finds out, like, oh crap, this is the guy that the doctor was warning me about. His name, Roger Ap William? William, Roger, Roger boy, or Mad Jack, uh, which we got another couple of nods to that early on. And so Ruby thinks that she knows her mission now. She's like, oh, I gotta save the world. Bye, peace. So she goes, she gets a job. She is volunteering uh, to be part of his whole political team. And she ends up being a coat holder at these events for the guy. And you definitely find out he is a monster. He is terrible. He is all about nuclear war. He is against NATO. There's a lot of very interesting things here. A lot of things correlating with the world. So I don't know if you're paying attention to that. And so she is waiting for the right opportunity. So he ends up getting the position as prime minister. And then she finds out when they go to this football field that he's gonna do this big announcement speech. And apparently he's gonna be getting the codes, the transfer codes for nuclear war. And she's like, this is my moment, hell no. And so she gets her phone, she walks out on the grass because he's like set on this little stage preparing, you know, planning what this talk's going to be. And she's getting 73 yards away. So then that way the woman can show up and what happens? The woman, she's doing her thing and then the guy sees her and what happens? He disengages. So clever on Ruby's part. That was pretty funny. Just like seeing him run. And then you see the news headlines that the prime minister resigns. So. 
Kudos, Ruby. You saved the day, saved the world from a nuclear holocaust, so good on you. And so she thinks, like, that's the end of it, right? Like, I did what you wanted me to do, lady. Like, that's it, right? You wanted me to, like, help save the world. And nope, she's still doing her interpretive dancing or whatever this is uh, in the distance. So she is with Ruby all throughout her life. So we end up getting old Ruby. She ends up going back to the TARDIS, you know, with her person who's like help, like her helper, I guess the best way to say it. Uh, she's like, you know, they're laying flowers and she spends a moment talking to the TARDIS, you know, like she's talking to the doctor and stuff and everything and kind of saying her goodbyes. And she goes back to her room to sleep and then she starts to hear voices and she sees the woman in her room and the woman is closer. And again, we're getting a lot of these like horror motifs where you get in here and like the whispers in your ear and then like the flashing of the of the lights and like seeing the figure appear all of a sudden and things like that. And just like the close ups of, you know, older Ruby's face. And it was just so fun. It was so cool. And then Ruby is about to see the face of the woman and then she ends up dying. And then she reappears in the form of a woman. And so then Ruby's the one that's doing this thing, old Ruby, which, okay, cool, had that thought, but I still have a lot of questions here. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, because this is more of a horror themed episode and there's a lot of things with horror and the supernatural that you just can't explain. So it's fine, it's fine, guys. And so when she reappears in the form of Miss Interpretive Dance, old lady, we see the young Ruby with the doctor coming out of the TARDIS and the woman is whispering to the younger Ruby. She's saying, don't step, don't step. And she makes sure that the doctor does not step on the fairy circle and that's what we find out this is like a legitimate fairy circle and there has been some nods throughout the episode of whales just being known for fae druids it's like folklore surrounding this country so they're just really playing off of that a lot um but yeah he was like talking about oh yeah this is the fairy circle probably shouldn't read anything shouldn't touch anything um you know and then they get on they start to go to explore whales and he's like didn't you say you've like been here three times and she's like yeah 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 i think so this episode was just it was very interesting to me because and i've seen this so russell t davies did write this episode and we noticed that in the 60th anniversary episodes the second one especially was super horror oriented, which I really loved. I had a lot of fun with that one. And so seeing that come back into this episode, I thought was just very different and fun. And that's something that I've noticed in a lot of these episodes this season is they're kind of one offs. They're each one has its own vibe and different thing going on, which I do like. I, it's keeping it fun and interesting, but what I'm really looking forward to is to see how it all ties together and pulls together in the end. And I'm really hoping it does. Seeing the preview for the next episode, it is very sci-fi vibes, very traditional Doctor Who to me. I'm getting very much season one with Eccleston with this vibe. Um, so again, it's like each one is like encompassing its own thing and own vibe. So I don't know if they're, if this is like, they're trying to figure out what audiences are liking, like these new audiences watching the show, what kind of vibe that they're really engaging in. Or again, if this is all going to just kind of come together for us at the end, I, I'm not sure. So again, I can't give too many thoughts other than I was very captivated by this episode, was very curious as to how it was gonna end up and play out. I still have questions, which I, I think is good. I think that's fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this all plays out for Miss Ruby. Again, all the mysteries surrounding Ruby and her, her parents, who are they? Who are her parents? Who is her mom? Why is she always abandoned? It's like this common theme all the time. Here is snow all the time. Every, you know, every time that Ruby shows up, there is snow. So yeah, a lot of questions there. And we are getting, again, the reoccurring actress, Susan Twist, showing up in every single episode. 
who is she? Is she the one that is coming after them? That is a theory, right? That's something that a lot of people have been talking about on the interwebs in the reddits is that old Susan here is the one that is coming after them that the maestro and the toy maker mentioned. So that could be it. Some people have said that she could also be like an older version of Ruby, which we've already gotten that in this episode. So I feel like that defeats that purpose. Some people have said, oh, maybe it's her mom. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think I would have more fun with her being the big bad that's coming or I don't know. She doesn't have master vibes to me. And that's the thing. The woman that played Missy for so many seasons, she's just, she's the master to me in regards to that form. So I don't think it's that, but she's something. So definitely curious about that. I've also seen the theory that's been circulating. Okay, now we're in theories territory. So we've been talking about Susan Twist theories, theories, theories. We've also, or I've also noticed on the interwebs, a theory about a possibility of who Ruby's mom is. Now, I don't know that they're gonna go down this avenue, but I thought that I would mention it because it is kind of fun to play with. So, some people say that Ruby's mom is River Song, which Ruby Sunday, River Song. And in the Devil's Chord, we have the moment when the maestro takes their you know, musical notes and wraps Ruby up and Ruby's up in the sky kind of a thing. And she starts singing and it's her soul song singing. And it really puts off the matrix. She's like, oh my gosh, like her, her soul has its own song. and. I, like, I can't do anything about it. Like, I can't affect her in that way. Um, and the whole thing with River and Melody being her first name and the whole song vibe. So, I don't know. There, I mean, I could see that being a tie. That, that would be, it would be interesting. And I love River as a character. And there has been possible information about the woman who plays River Song coming back for an episode or two. So again, I think that's a rumor. I'm not sure that that was officially confirmed, but it could be cool to see her again. And that would be interesting to see how that plays out. But I don't know. I still don't know that I'm convinced about that. I But who knows where they're going with this, right? Which it's fun. It's a mystery, you know, and we're part of the journey. So. I'm definitely curious to see what you guys thought about this episode. Cause again, got like a little bit of sci-fi and a whole lot of horror, mystery, thriller kind of vibes in this. So what did you think about this episode? Were you feeling it? Were you feeling the vibe? Or was this just like a giant mist to you? Did you catch anything particular about interpretive dance Ruby? Um, you, know, did, you know, was that answered as to you know, like why people were running from her and why she was doing this. I, I might have just missed that. Um, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you noticed anything particular that I might have missed. Do you have a theory about the Snoopy neighbor, who she might be? Yeah, again, questions. I don't really know. So please leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode and your expectations for the next episode too. Again, I think it has more of that sci-fi old school Doctor Who vibe, which I've been really waiting for. And so I'm definitely interested to see how that one plays out. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me for another episode at Cafe Crashdown, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much.